create an everyday carry kit. Mm. While the average civilian approaches emergency preparedness from a life support mm. perspective that prioritizes food and water supplies stashed deep in a home basement, to the exclusion of weapons and escape to tools, mm. true preparedness acknowledges and confronts the violence of the modern world. To ensure a state of constant preparedness, the violent nomad carries up to three types of everyday carry or EDC kits, each designed to support his mission and to help him evade crisis. Whether the call comes or not, the EDC kits also provide an edge against unexpected threats of all sorts, from environmental disasters to terrorist strikes and lone wolf attacks. When traveling through a potentially hostile territory or during turbulent times, a nomad will distribute several layers of life support and personal safety items throughout his clothing and outerwear. In the event that he is stripped of his primary weapon, this practice may leave him with several undetected options as a last resort. Escape gear in particular should be spread out in such a way that some of it remains available if the nomad is restrained. The most basic kit, the pocket kit, should be comprised of essential weapons, escape and evasion equipment, and one black or covert mobile phone. Rather than being consolidated into a single container or concealment, these items should be distributed throughout clothing. A handgun should be concealed in a waistband holster for the most accessible draw. See page 152 for tips on drawing a holstered weapon. An emergency communication device is essential, but other co contents will vary depending on the terrain. A stainless steel zebra pen can be used to leave notes for potential rescuers, or to strike an assailant. In the case of abduction or detention, a handcuff key and LED light camouflaged alongside car or hotel keys are potential lifesavers as backup in the event that clothes pockets are searched, or a concealable handcuff key can be hidden in a shirt cuff or on a zipper pull. Some operatives carry mouthpieces which can be vital during hand-to-hand -hand combat. The container kit, generally tucked away into a jacket or an operational bag, see below, functions as a backup in the event that an operative is stripped of his primary weapon and or operational bag. This highly condensed kit contains small improvised weapons, loose coins tied up in a handkerchief, and navigational aids, a headlamp, and a handheld GPS device that change depending on the environment, as well as lock-picking tools that could provide access to information, food, or shelter. Purchased within these areas of operation, a set of recce, reconnaissance, key blanks, provides an advantage in breaking and entering scenarios. Durable and reliable discreet, reliably discreet, a rigid sunglass case is the optimal container for this kit. The final piece of the puzzle is the operational bag. To prepare for the possibility of escaping in the face of surveillance or attack, its contents should include an empty collapsible backpack and a change of clothes and colors opposite from the ones the operative is wearing. Even shoes should be taken into consideration. If wearing sneakers, pack a pair of rubber sandals. A concealed pocket holds highly sensitive data on memory devices, such as thumb drives or SD cards. A Kevlar clipboard acts as an innocuous-looking form of improvised ballistic armor, and a wad of cash allows the nomad to subsist in deep cover for as long as the situation demands. Related skills, build a vehicle bolt bag, page 10. Create a hasty disguise, page 200. Use improvised body armor, page 20. Identify emergency ballistic shields, page 22. Number 002. Create an everyday carry kit. CONOP. Acquire and consolidate specific items in order to equip everyday carry or EDC kits. CASH. A SIG. Sour. Pistol. A cuff key with an LED light. A black phone. A zebra pen. A compass. Concealable. Plastic concealable cuff key. A mouthpiece. A knife. A wallet lock picking set. A watch. And a razor blade. Course of action 2. Container kit. Rake pick and tensioner wrench. Clamshell molding case. Handkerchief and 550 paracord, a GPS device, reconnaissance key blanks, a headlamp, loose change in a, in a handkerchief, and a rigid sunglasses case. Course of action 3, operational bag, man purse, zero trace messenger bag, concealable pocket for data concealed in zero trace messenger bag, concealed razor blade, empty collapsible backpack, 
sandals, change of clothes in opposite colors of clothing worn, cigarettes, lighter, extra watch, sunglasses, cash, an umbrella, a map, and a bulletproof clipboard. Bottom line up front, life is unpredictable. Everyday carry kits provide the upper hand against the unknown. Build a vehicle bolt bag. Operatives don't have the luxury of being able to return to base to stock up on food or ammunition, so their effectiveness as free-range agents is built around preparation. And preparation means always being prepared for the worst. When an operative is conducting a mission abroad, one of the first orders of business upon being called into action is building a bolt bag. In the case of an emergency, this bag, also known as a bug-out kit, becomes an essential life support system. It contains everything needed to keep the operative alive, should he have to go black, hiding out of sight until he can either resume his mission or make arrangements to safely exit the area of operation. A bolt bag typically consists of a day or two of life support, water, food, cash, emergency su medical supplies, navigation aids, and a black or covert phone similar to the type known in the criminal world as a burner. The bag should be stashed in the operational vehicle, concealed in a spot that is easily accessible from the driver's seat, such as the center console compartment, between the seats, or under the seat. Should the operative find himself upside down as the result of a collision with aggressors, the kit should be within arm's reach. As its name implies, the bolt bag needs to be light enough to be carried. Canned foods and other heavy supplies do not lend themselves to ease of transport. Civilian bottom line up front. In day-to-day -day life, bolt bags can be used as a precautionary disaster measures, not only by civilians living in regions of high, at high risk for natural disasters, but by anyone alert to the threat of urban disasters or terrorism. Number 003. Build a vehicle bolt bag. CONOP. Be ready to move when crisis strikes. Pack or messenger bag. Change of clothes not shown. Weatherproof paper map. Energy bars. Meal ready to eat or MRE. Water. Extra batteries. Tourniquet. Credit card. Cash. Multi tool. Blowout kit, which, which is a pressure dressing tourniquet. Extra weapon magazines. Medical shears. Extra black phone. Zero trace flashlight. Handheld GPS. <coughs> Bottom line up front, a solid bolt bag should contain one day of life support. Make a concealable compass. Covert situations often call for easily concealable, dependable, lo-fi alternatives, and in the case of a compass, a simple pair of magnets fits the bill. An operative may have been stripped of his GPS device upon capture, or may be working in context in which the use of handheld GPS system would attract too much notice. A concealable compass ensures that the nomad is always able to effectively navigate through unknown territory no matter how remote. Though micro compasses may be found at any adventure store, in the developed world they may not be available elsewhere. Improvised compasses, on the other hand, are easy to make using resources readily available in most countries. The tool works by harnessing the power of rare earth magnets. The baseline mechanism used to power the compasses. Tuned to the dial of the Earth's magnetic field, when connected and allowed to dangle from a length of thread, the, rod, the rods become a natural compass. One points south, the other north. Because the purchase of rare earth magnets can arouse suspicion, it is advisable to seek out less al alerting products such as refrigerator magnets, whiteboard magnets, or magnetic handbag closures, always in pairs. Any improvisation must be tested thoroughly, lest the nomad be confronted with an inaccurate improvised tool mid-escape. Civilian bottom line up front. The standard instructions for building a compass, see illustration, involve a pair of rare earth rod magnets and a length of Kevlar cord chosen for its durability, but a similar effect may be achieved by piercing a magnetized needle through a cork and floating the device in water. Number 004. Make a concealable compass. CONOP. Construct and conceal a fail-safe backup compass. Course of Action 1. Improvised compasses are, once, are more discreet than their manufactured counterparts and are easy to make using ordinary tools. Kevlar thread, sharpie, rare earth rod magnets, compass front and back, and scissors. Course of Action 2. Cut six inches or more of Kevlar thread. Clamp the thread between two 
rare earth ma rods. Course of action three. Dangle the magnets. Use a compass to determine which rod is north. Mark the north rod with a marker. Course of action four. Small enough to be sewn into a hem, the resulting compass can be concealed in a variety of places. Bottom line up front. Poor navigation is the number one cause of recapture after escape. Build an improvised concealable holster. Operatives are well versed in using underground channels to acquire weapons within the area of operation as guns and other munitions cannot be transported across international borders without permission from both the country of origin and the destination country. But specialized equipment such as concealable holsters are often harder to come by and any attempt to smuggle them in would certainly get a nomad pulled into an unwanted detainment at customs. In order to maintain a low profile, operatives generally travel as lightly as possible, utilizing off-the-shelf resources to fulfill their mission requirements. The, this predisposition toward minimalism pre presents challenges, but does not tend to leave operatives in a disadvantaged position, as many improvised tools, the holster included, provide a better capability than manufactured versions. Commercially available holsters tend to make concealment difficult. Bulky and inflexible, they increase the overall signature of the weapon in an operative's waistline and can make extraction a challenge. A pistol that cannot be quickly and seamlessly removed from an operative's holster becomes a deadly liability, so the choice of holster is crucial. This improvised model, made of wire hanger and tape, con constitutes virtually no additional bulk and ensures a quick and glitch-free draw. Related skills and draw a concealed pistol, page 152. Number 005. Build an improvised concealable holster. Conop. Construct a concealable pistol holster use, utilizing a wire clothes hanger. Course of action 1. Acquire supplies, wire hanger tape, and wire cutters. Course of action 2. Cut and remove the hook from the hanger. Course of action 3. Straighten the remaining wire and fold in half. Course of action 4. Bend the folded end one inch from the loop. Course of action five. Bend two inches from the first bend, creating an end, S. Course of action six. Measure the length of the pistol to determine the barrel hook bend point. Course of action number seven. Bend the barrel hook. Hooks should be two to three inches. Cut and remove remaining wire and tape for comfort. Holster in use with hook and gun barrel. Bottom line up front, a good concealable holster should also provide support and security for the pistol. Conceal escape tools. The possibility of being captured, kidnapped, or taken hostage exists for all travelers, but it's one that is special, that's especially real for operatives who cannot rely upon being bailed out by their home nation governments. If captured, operatives can expect to be immediately frisked for concealed weapons, at which point they are likely to have most of their gear confiscated by their captors. Escape aids concealed in clothing may remain undetected for a while, but operatives know that if they are in a captivity long enough, they will eventually be stripped naked and have to rely solely on upon the escape tools they have concealed on and inside their bodies. Given a lack of institutional backup, self-escape preparations are an essential component of a nomad's every operational plan. A human aversion to bloody bandages means captors are unlikely to closely ex examine lesions or scars, so a nomad can utilize medical adhesive to glue specific tools onto the body underneath manufactured wounds. There is also a near-universal reluctance on the part of captors for frisking, patting down, or probing the nether regions of detainees, and this unease provides operatives with exploitable opportunities for concealment of escape tools and axilla, or armpit, hair, or pubic hair. Body concealments can be as elaborate as suppositories placed in the penis, urethra, and foreskin, vagina, or rectum, or in the nostrils, ears, nose, and navel and they can be as simple as barely perceptible condoms. Note, this advantage can work to a nomad's benefit, but diminishes quickly as he or she is transferred to increasingly higher levels of detention and security. Related skills construct a rectal concealment, page 18. Number 006, conceal escape tools. Conceal escape tools on and within the body. Course of action one, bandage, bloody. Razor blade, handcuff key on the inside. Course of action 2. Hair concealment. Medical adhesive used to glue tools to pubic or axilla hairlines. 
Course of Action 3, Tampon Applicator with Tools Inside. Course of Action 4, Silicone Scars. False scars with tools hidden within scar tissue. Properly con bottom line up front, properly concealed tools increase chances of a successful escape. Construct a rectal concealment. When a mission involves a high potential for capture, operatives prepare for the possibility that they will be detained, searched, and stripped of any visible weapons. This leaves the operative only one method of recourse. The concealment of weapons and escape tools in his body cavities. Navigation aids money, escape tools, and even makeshift weapons such as an improvised ice pick, see illustration, can be concealed inside a tampon applicator or aluminum cigar tube that is inserted into the anal cavity. The use of the rectal passage as a hiding place for illegal items or weapons is common in the shadow worlds of drug trafficking and terrorism. But the technique is also well known to operatives as an extreme measure of self-preservation used during ground zero of high-risk missions. Such concealment is surprisingly immune to high-tech methods of detection. Full body scanners bounce electromagnetic waves off the body in search of metallic objects and other contraband. While their low-frequency radar can detect weapons that protrude from the body, it cannot see through skin or bone. Even x-ray machines don't do a very good job of rendering items camouflaged in tissue, and MRI machines used in medical contexts would render a concealment as a shadow that, given its location, could be mistaken for fecal matter. Note, any improvised containers must be waterproof, non-toxic, smooth, and sealed on their upper end. Number 007, construct a rectal concealment. Conop. Conceal life-saving tools in body cavities. Dowel cut to fit the length of the tube. Hole for the nail. Nail. Money. Shim. Map. Compass. All inside of an aluminum cigar tube. Nail through the hole in the lid held tightly by the dowel to make an improvised ice pick. Cut the dowel to the exact length of tube, short enough to fit snugly in the tube but still allow tube to screw down completely. Drill a hole in the lid enough, big enough for a nail. Fill the tube with tools and money. Use vegetable oil or other lubricant to insert tube into rectum. When ready to, to escape, retrieve and turn into an ice pick. Aim for the throat. Bottom line up front, exploit the fact that captors may be squeamish about searching body cavities. It's not just captors. Use improvised body armor. Whether engaging armed targets or caught in the crossfire of social unrest, operatives frequently find themselves in need of body armor. Government-issued armor provides the best protection against injury, but because of its traceability, operatives on covert missions are not authorized to use it. To survive, they must learn to create improvised body armor using everyday items and materials. When taped tightly together in units of two, hardcover books such as encyclopedias and dictionaries become rigid bundles of plates that can dissipate the energy of, of a projectile. Taping commonly available ceramic tiles to the outer facing of each plate provides an additional layer of protection, and the resulting armor can be concealed by a jacket or coat or easily carried in a messenger bag or backpack. Plates should be suspended on the front and back of the torso in order to protect center mass, the spine and vital organs such as the heart and lungs. Another layer of protection can be achieved via a commercially available Kevlar clipboard rated to stop 9mm pistol bullets. Lightweight and portable once painted with a flat brown paint, the clipboard is non-alerting and will pass scrutiny if examined at border crossing or airport. Improvised armor must be thick enough to slow or stop a projectile, and thin enough to be wearable. Depending on available materials, violent nomads may be able to create improvised body armor thick enough to stop a projectile. Pistol rounds travel more slowly, 9mm projectile at 1100 feet per second. Faster rifle rounds, 5.56mm projectile at approximately 3000 feet per second, require more protective material, but an operative never quite knows what he will encounter and so tends to build for the worst case scenario. Number 008. Use improvised body armor. Conop. Build expedient body armor using everyday items. Course of Action 1. Acquire hardback books, duct tape, and ceramic tiles. 
Course of action two, tape two or more books together to create one plate. Construct two plates. Tape on a layer of ceramic tiles. Course of action three, add shoulder straps made of tape to create a body armor system. Secure system to body by wrapping horizontal layers of duct tape. Tape a double layer of tape to itself to prevent the straps from sticking to your shoulders. Course of action four, conduct a jump test to add tape as and add tape as needed to increase integrity. Bottom line up front, as a method of last resort, operatives can use hardcover books to deflect projectiles. Identify emergency ballistic shields. When bullets are flying, the odds of survival are determined by split-second decisions. Whether those decisions are educated ones rather than unconscious mo moves made in the clutches of fight or flight can mean the difference between safety and serious injury or death. The instinct to run for cover is universal, but it must be coupled with an understanding of the relationship between ballistics and everyday materials. Dense wood, concrete, steel, and granite are the preferred materials in the face of open fire. These thick, heavy materials can stop bullets and save lives. Sheetrock walls may offer concealment, thus diminishing a sh shooter's accuracy and give it the appearance of solidity, but they will not stop bullets. Even a small twenty two caliber pistol can rip through drywall. <coughs> Concrete or steel columns, on the other hand, provide better ballistic protection despite their relative lack of coverage. In cases of emergency, these principles can be applied to many of the objects in civilian environments. Granite top tables, counter concrete planters, and steel appliances all fit the bill. Countertops, desks, and tables in hotel rooms are frequently made of granite or steel, but some everyday objects appear solid, yet are made of lightweight materials that won't hold up to gunfire. Mailboxes and trash cans are generally made out of aluminum. Hulking vending machines are mostly comprised of glass and plastic. Cars are partially made of steel, but a steel so lightweight that it fails to offer adequate protection. In the absence of other options, hiding behind the engine side of a car, rather than the empty trunk, puts an additional layer of dense materials between an operative or civilian and the shooter. Related skills, use improvised body armor, page 20, survive an active shooter, page 178. Number 009, identify emergency ballistic shields. CONOP, nowhere to take cover when caught in crossfire. Course of action 1, bullet slowing and stopping materials. Dense wood, concrete, steel, and granite. Course of action 2, know the difference between cover and concealment. Cover stops bullets, concealment doesn't. Concrete and steel, cover. Drywall, concealment. Course of action 3, identify and use makeshift structures while at home or in public. Use a granite top table, not a sofa. Hide behind the engine side of a car not the trunk side. Use a concrete planter, not a trash can. Course of action four, acquire bulletproof materials and disguise as everyday items, such as a mica clipboard or a hardcover book that is bolstered with bulletproof plates. Bottom line up front, always choose cover over concealment and rapidly move from cover to cover. The Violent Nomad Workout no strangers to ruthless obstacle courses and drills that combine sleep deprivation and live explosives to simulate the hardships of real-world combat, operatives are trained under the toughest conditions on Earth. Once past basic training, they remain combat ready by incorporating the run-fight-run formula into their workouts. Repeatedly lifting a pair of dumbbells doesn't translate into an ability to defeat an assailant in hand-to-hand -hand combat after an arduous chase over rugged terrain. So violent nomad training prizes real-world combat and self-defense techniques over muscle-building reps. Traditional strength building and cardiovascular exercises have their place, but integrating the run-fight-run philosophy into workout routines builds the endurance to outlast an opponent in a fight and or chase. Consisting of integrated and repetitive striking movements stacked with sprints, run-fight-run workouts do not require a gym or any sophisticated equipment. All that's needed is a place to sprint and an object to carry and strike, preferably a heavy punching bag designed for striking it is versatile enough to be used for squats, deadlifts, carrying, and presses. A heavy bag can also be thrown and struck on the ground, which is where most fights end up. Civilian bottom line up front. 
Use the heavy bag to perform a mix of exercises with sprints integrated between reps. Increased duration and weight is needed to ramp up intensity over time. A worthy conditioning goal is to be able to perform three sets of striking for three minutes straight and then sprint for one mile in seven minutes or less. Number 10, the violent workout, the violent nomad workout, CONOP. Use a stacked workout to simulate fighting conditions. Hanging heavy bag strikes, one minute. Sprint half a mile. Grounded heavy bag strikes, one minute. Sprint half a mile. Heavy bag bear hug carry, one minute. Sprint half a mile. Bottom line up front, a run-fight-run philosophy builds endurance for hand-to-hand -hand combat.